بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Tonight we'll be covering the next. Let's see here. One, two, three. Uh, three things that are mentioned under the category of noble character. Uh, the first of these three is ikhlas, sincerity. The second is muraqaba, uh, meditating on Allah Most High. And then number three, concentration while reciting the Holy Quran. We ask Allah to make this reminder beneficial for us. Amir Rabbil Alameen. In terms of the first one, ikhlas, this is, subhanAllah, this is, of course, um, you know, what's mentioned here is it's a, it's a nice, you know, bite-sized reminder. But of course, as we know, this topic in and of itself is, is huge. And there's so much that can be said. But we just want to touch upon a few things and then move on uh, to keep things uh, on the shorter end for the sake of being concise, bi'ithnillah. What's mentioned here uh, under ikhlas sincerity, whatever work of deen we do, we should intend it only for the pleasure of Allah. There should be no worldly aims underlying it, nor should it be for ostentation and show. For example, uh, for for uh, for people to see me, to recognize me as a pious person, etc. To illustrate this point of having something contrary to a completely sincere intention, we need to reflect on, uh, for example, so as mentioned is a couple of different good deeds and, uh, and the importance of the intention behind them. Uh, fasting, we'll do, um, you know, giving charity. So the idea is to, to, so it has to be a good deed with a good intention. So we need both things to be present. And that's what's mentioned here. And this is highly important. Um, moving on to the, to the next page here. To leave out a good deed, to leave out a good action due to fear of showing off is also a form of riyat of ostentation or showing off. And this is one of the key tricks of shaitan. Shaitan will come to a person and let's say that person, you know, they, they have the intention to give sadaqah, to give charity. And they're about to give charity maybe in a masjid. And then they think to themselves that, you know, there's someone else, you know, on the other side of the room or the hallway or whatever it may be, you know, because they see me or they might see me, therefore I should not give charity. This is one of the classic tricks of shaitan. Shaitan wants to, to psych a person out to the point where they end up not doing a good deed out of fear of potentially showing off as it relates to that deed. Classic trick of shaitan, may Allah protect us from it. Shaitan will come to the person and will try to convince them that, you know, you're only doing this good deed, this good action for the sake of showing off. You're only giving that charity because you want that person to see you. You're only praying those two extra rakahs, uh, because you want people to see you. Let's think of it this way. What's the end goal of shaitan? Shaitan just wants to prevent a person from doing a good deed. And he will try every trick in the, in, 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 in the book, in his book, to, to get a person to not do the good deed. Right? So if a person does a good deed, he wants them to actually show off. And if a person is going to do a good deed, he also wants them to think you know, so basically he'll play all these different mind games, right? He'll try to get you uh, uh, to, to avoid doing a good deed because you might be showing off. Or if you do a good deed, he wants you to do it for the sake of showing off. He'll try to come at you from different angles from, as Allah mentions, uh, as Allah quotes him in the Quran, Shaitan made a promise that he'll, you know, he'll try to, to come at the person from, from in front of them, from behind them, from the right, from the left. And he'll try to cause them to become ungrateful. So he's going to try to, to come at us from different angles. And this is one of them. He'll try to talk you out of doing a good deed, out of fear of potentially showing off. Right? So he wants to, to use the good deed against the person. How do, we, how do we deal with this? We should do the good deed anyways. Right? We should do the good deed anyways. To give that sadaqah anyways. To give that charity anyways. To pray those two rakahs anyways. Whatever that good deed is, to read Quran or whatever it may be, to do it anyways. Right? Because the intention is for Allah. Bismillah. The intention is for Allah. You do it as best you can. May Allah accept it. And after doing a good deed, right? We we want to be in the middle. We hope that Allah accepts it. And we and we also fear that it's not accepted. Now, neither of these should be taken to an extreme. 
For example, if a person does a good deed, they should not think to themselves automatically, oh, of course this is accepted. Of course I'm going to Jannah. That's going way too far to this side. And then on the other side, right, is if there's too much fear and if, you know, if there's too, if, if that overdose of fear turns into despair, right? So we want to be in the middle. We hope the good deed is accepted and we fear that it's not accepted. May Allah accept any good that we try to do and may Allah forgive any of our mistakes. I mean, Rabbana Alameen. So we, we, we want to, to, to try to do that good deed anyways. We hope it's sincere. May Allah accept it. Uh, and then the commentary continues. Do not be concerned with the whisperings of shaitan. The thoughts and feelings of riyat showing off. Do not constitute riyat as long as you do not make the intention to purposely show off. In this manner, when you immerse yourself in good actions and are not concerned with these thoughts and whisperings, shaitan will become powerless and go away. Uh, what's mentioned next is a uh, is a line of poetry. The, the riyat ostentation due to which people were taunting the salik, the person trying to come closer to Allah, first was a habit, then eventually it became worship i.e. it no longer remained riyat. Sometimes this happens where, um, you know, sometimes for someone regarding a certain action, a certain habit, maybe in the beginning there is riyat. Maybe there is an element of ostentation or showing off. But if a person remains consistent, and this is also mentioned here, uh, in the beginning, maybe someone does an action for showing off, but then it becomes a habit. And then this habit, turns into ibadah or worship, and then ikhlas, sincerity, right? So the idea is, you know, just keep going. Just keep trying to do that good deed. Keep on going, you know, the little engine that could. Just keep pushing, keep going. And then hopefully over time, you know, the the, the intention becomes refined and then the end product is something good. In short, do not be concerned with... Um, that riya which comes unintentionally and do not abstain from good deeds due to it. That's a very, uh, very good way to, to conclude the section. Moving on to the next one, muraqaba, meditating on Allah Most High. So th this is the process of reflecting that Allah sees us at all times, Allah hears us at all times. So to just reflect upon that, to meditate upon that, to think about that and for that concept to permeate the heart and for it to truly take root and to have an effect on us. You know, anyone can think to themselves that they're super mu'min, you know, that they're a super believer. Okay, but thinking that is easy. Thinking, anyone can think that. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. So what this is teaching us here, what this is reminding us to take time and to reflect. So it's mentioned here that we should think, if I do an evil action or bring evil thoughts into my heart, then Allah May, may punish me in this world or in the hereafter. So there, there's this constant process of tazkiyah, this constant, you know, effort of trying to purify the heart, of trying to, 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 to put in that work. It's not easy. No one is making that claim at all. It takes work on a daily basis, on a constant basis. If you think about it, Allah tells us time and time in, in, in the Quran, the importance of doing tasbih, of doing adhkar in the morning and evening, ideally on a consistent basis, right? So, Every day, twice a day, this shows us something, right? The five daily prayers, all these different, um, you know, good deeds that are encouraged to do on a daily basis, because that's the amount of work that needs to be put in as best we can within our capacity. Uh, attaining this state of muraqaba necessitates ascribing uh, some time every day for, for the sole purpose of briefly, of briefly, excuse me, pondering on the following. Allah is watching me and my heart. And this is important because a person may think, oh, you know, they're just thoughts that creep into the heart. It's okay. But then those thoughts turn into intentions. Those intentions turn into action. Those actions, they turn into habits, right? And that turns into a lifestyle. So if a person is not careful from the very beginning, then one thing can lead to another. It's a slippery slope, basically. So we want to try to monitor things, uh, especially from the, very, from the very beginning. Allah is watching me and my heart. The reality of this contemplative thought will begin to manifest after a period of time, and it will endure. It is hoped that by the will of Allah, and with the blessings of this contemplation, we are able to refrain from any action contrary to His pleasure. And this should tie in with our prayer, 
right? Our prayer is not supposed to be just prayer. Meaning it's not supposed to be something that's just physical. What does Allah say in Surah Mu'minun? The first thing regarding the believers, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Right, Allah says that the believers are definitely successful. Those who, in their prayer, they're in a state of awe. They're in a state of khushur. They're in a state of, of, of humility before Allah Azza wa Jal. Their prayer is more than just something physical. The physical part's important, yes. But the physical is supposed to be connected and coupled with the, the spiritual as well. Moving on to item number three, concentration while reciting the Holy Quran. So that we have, we have one or two paragraphs here. This could literally be turned into an entire book. Uh, actually, Imam al Nawi has a beautiful book uh, regarding you know etiquette with the Quran. What's mentioned here, upon intending to recite the Holy Quran, you should ponder over what Allah has commanded uh, regarding His book. Recite my speech to me, and let me see how you recite. Also take into consideration how you attempt to recite the Qur'an with so much care and beauty when in front of prominent people. Now taking into account that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is certainly ever watchful and always listening, should we, not, should we not attempt to recite in the most beautiful manner every time? A point of caution while, rec while reciting, however, is that if you become unmindful, then immediately renew this thought and refocus. Rest assured, uh, though that the heart will be able to concentrate with relative ease after practicing for some time. So the idea when reciting the Quran is to not just, you know, zoom through the letters, the words, and the verses, but to take our time. It doesn't mean that when we recite, we take an extremely long amount of time for an ayah or a surah. That's not necessarily the point. The point is to concentrate, right? To 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 derive benefit from what it is that we're reciting, what it is. Uh, that we're listening to, right? So when it comes to Surah Fatiha, for example, are we benefiting from the reminder of how merciful Allah is? Are we benefiting from the reminder that within Surah Al-Fatiha, especially at the beginning, Allah highly emphasizes His mercy over and over. But then within the same Surah, at the end of it, Allah does mention that there are people who, in spite of how, mer how merciful Allah is, Allah is the most merciful. And that's emphasized at the beginning of Surah Fatiha. But then at the end of the Surah, Allah mentions that there are those who earn His anger. Right? So there's a reminder in this. Allah is the most merciful. Allah is the most merciful. Yes, without question. That's not an excuse to mess around though. Because if we do and the hearts become hard, so on and so forth, then what ends up happening, al maghdubi alayhim. Those who make Allah angry with them. Option one with Allah is always mercy. Option one is always mercy. But if a person continues to transgress and they cross bounds and boundaries, they mistreat people, they abuse people, they oppress people over and over and over and over and over, it's a major issue. Right? So we want to benefit from what it is we're reciting. We want to concentrate. We want to derive uh, fruit right, from the tree of the Qur'an. We don't just want to look at the fruit. We want to actually pluck that fruit and taste it. We want to reflect and to concentrate as best we can. Allah says in Surah Al-Isra that this Qur'an, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِهِ أَقْوَمْ It guides to that which is most upright. And then Allah tells, um, and then and then Allah tells us after that in the same ayah, وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ صَالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجَرًا كَبِيرًا and it gives glad tidings to the believers uh, who do good deeds. You know, they live their faith. They have good character with people. It's not just a claim, hey, I'm Muslim and that's it. How's your character? How do you treat people? Right? How respectful are you of others? How, how do you go about, especially these days, different, for example, different guidelines when you go to the masjid? Right? That the importance of taking the faith that's rooted in the heart and for it to manifest on the limbs, to manifest on the tongue. Right? So there has to be this constant balance. Think of it as a three-legged stool between the heart, the tongue, and the and the limbs. And Allah also tells us in Surah Isra that this Quran is 
is healing and mercy for the believers, right? So we want to benefit from it. We want to reflect upon it. May Allah make the Qur'an uh, proof for us and not against us. We ask Allah to make us people of Qur'an and we ask Allah to protect us from being from among those who abandon the Qur'an. Amin Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah again to quickly recap the three noble characteristics that are mentioned here uh, in this awesome book, Reformation of Character. Number one, ikhlas, sincerity. Number two, muraqaba. So meditating on Allah Most High, reflecting, you know, taking ourselves into account, basically. Um, and then number three, concentration while reciting the Holy Quran. We ask Allah to guide us and forgive us. We ask Allah to make this reminder beneficial for us. Amir Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah to help us to benefit from this awesome book, Reformation of Character. It's not too long, but it, it's packed with a lot of benefit. Uh, we ask Allah to, to, to help us to derive benefit from it. We ask Allah to benefit the author as well as the translator and the publishing house. Amir Rabbil Alameen. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Azzati Amma Yassifun. Wassalamun al-Mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.